Hey everybody, Marky here from uh, John 1911, and this is going to be episode 18 of our Armory Chats. It's Sunday about 2.30. I would imagine many of you are probably watching sports. Uh, I'm in the Armory. Instead of watching sports, I'm getting ready to do sports. Um, doing my pre-workout little drink here. We have a gym here at the uh, at the Armory, so I'm um, you know drinking some caffeine and going to change and uh, hit the gym, the weight room, which is about 75 feet from where I'm sitting right now. So I'm actually in my office. I'm not in the uh, rifle room and uh, wanted to do a, uh, a follow-up on, on, uh, on a subject that we, uh, that we had talked about before. Um, I had broken my daily holster. It's a um, keeper's concealment. Uh, AIWB holster. I, it's a Kydex holster, uh, plastic holster, and I really am fond of it. And um, I cracked it. So it turns out I had a couple cracks in it. The first I even realized there was a problem is that uh, you know my HK VP9 kept falling out. So I had a couple incidences where it fell out. Pretty odd. I'm a pretty rough and tumble guy, and um, you know, looked at it. It was like, holy crap! There's some cracks, and you, you know, those of you that follow us know that this is uh, this. You know that, that that this happened. You can look at the past videos. That's why we filmed this like this. So, anyway, um, the replacement holster has come in from. Let me do this here. The replacement holster has come in from uh, Keepers Concealment, and um, uh, you know, in full disclosure, um, uh, we're not getting anything free from Keepers Concealment. Um, I'm not a gear reviewer. Uh, we don't do gear reviews because I don't. We, you know, we do not play with gear that doesn't interest us. So, if you know, our slang term is "if we want your shit, we'll buy your shit." So, um, which brings up a, the point of this video. So, um, they were nice enough to send. I mean, a ton, an absolute ton of wedges. So, I mean, I'm about three hundred. 300 I don't know 25 350 dollars deep into this into this holster let me go ahead and take this off since I gotta put I gotta put gym clothes on anyway so all right here's the um, here's the replacement holster it came in uh, uh, this week it's um, AIWB let me uh, gun is hot so uh, AIWB holster um, you know, I like the holster so much that, you know, I paid up for a second one and um, couldn't really repair the Kydex on the first one. Um, spoke to the maker and he basically was like, you know, we're going to, you know, we're just going to have to remake it. So, and he was telling me that supposedly the Kydex on the newer holsters is thicker and I don't have the original holster I mean because you know I mean for liability reasons you can't send it back to me but I I would think this kydex looks like it's looks like look looks like it's thicker I mean I, I buy that I, I'm, I'm down with that that seems legit um, again very fond of the holster <sighs> you know if I crack this one second one I'm I'm gonna be out of them so but here's the here's the here's the point of this. I guess the lesson, the lesson to be learned uh, on these semi-custom pseudo-custom holsters. Yeah. I mean, I waited many, many, many weeks for this replacement holster, and you know, a Kydex plastic holster. They're all plastic, you know, whatever. A plastic holster, they're they're crackable, so you can break them if you live in a real world and you're not one of these guys that just sits behind a desk and you know and you get one of these holsters and you have to wait six weeks for a replacement and plus pay you know lord knows how much to get them uh you know that might be something this might be a data point you may want to be aware of before you step into these things um you know uh, it's it's one of the i guess it's it's one of the advantages of say a glock a Glock holster or having a Glock system because there's so many, so many um, options for um, for the uh, for the Glock holsters that you know Glock guns that you can you know get stuff from anywhere and anybody and you don't have to wait 
you know, three, four, five, six weeks to get a replacement. So some of you are probably noticing why the camera in my office is at this angle as opposed to um, where it normally is on my desk. It's because you're actually over by the holster drawers. Well, there's three, there's a holster drawer, there's a sling drawer, well, there's two holster drawers, there's a sling drawer. Uh, on the other side is an AR stenag mag drawer, and then there's even actually a 1911 magazine drawer. So it was just easier. And also some of you, we've had requests, people wanna see some of the stuff on the wall behind my desk. So this is a chance to maybe get a quick peek at some of the other stuff that's on the wall. So, and yeah, it's, it stuff's all real. So, um, you know, it's, uh, let's see here. Uh, you know, back in the day, uh, you, you know, we used, a lot of us used to run custom leather holsters. And um, this is, uh, is it Milt Sparks VM2? This is a, I guess that's a four inch, or is that a four? Well, I would think that would be a four and a quarter, but it says four inch. But leather holster, and you know, you pay big money for these leather holsters. And, you know, but the downside of leather holsters is they hold moisture. And if you're running a fancy gun and you're concerned about, you know, corrosion and you're doing an eight, a 12, or a 16 hour day out in the weather and your gun sits in that, uh, you know, it's an issue. I mean, I've rusted many a high end 1911, corroded them, and you just have to kind of go with it. But, Look, going through some of these experiences with some of these Kydex, it makes you kind of like, well, I think the Kydex is a better design, but, you know, I'm to the point now that I'm paying leather holster money for a plastic Kydex product that if it breaks, I'm out for six weeks. I mean, that's, you know, I think a lot of people don't really think of that. Um, just, you know, maybe, um, let's see, here's, uh, here's one for a five inch. I used to, uh, I, this holster, this is a, uh, uh same, it's, um, that Milt Sparks, right? Yeah, it's, that's, uh, Milt, that's gotta be a Milt Sparks VM too. This was one of my main holsters. Uh, I have had this holster literally soaking wet. I've had this thing totally, totally, I mean, you know, just roached out. This, this is the holster that is actually corroded a couple of uh, high-end 1911s that you folks have seen around here. So, you know, um, it's, you know, there's, you know, maybe one of the maybe one of the better options is to go for uh, maybe more of a neighborhood type. Uh, maybe this is this is a holster made by uh, it's a night it's a that's a 1911 holster. This was made by a guy that's kind of regional to me. He, I, I wouldn't say I used to work with him, but he we've worked at the same place in the past and he's a gun guy and um you know uh, but even this guy this kind of holster while it may be like a hundred bucks it's not it maybe eight i think it was 80 bucks it still took the guy a couple weeks to get the holster to you especially if you know you know if, if you you know if you if you need it so i mean if you break it you need a replacement so let's see here in the holster drawer we get oh here we go If I had a, if I had any extra inventory from the t-shirt business, I would actually have a raffle and um, see if anyone could guess what this holster is. This is a um, just for giggles. If anyone can knows what the, if this is a leather holster, it is from I will uh, it's from um, I don't want to say the country. It's from a European country. Um, well, here's here, here's a clue. It's from a European country that doesn't exist anymore. See if you can tell me what uh, what gun this is for. This is new and issued. Freeze had gotten a bunch of these. God, about ten years ago, and uh, we picked some up. And I've never even had. I've never even owned the gun that this holster is for. European country doesn't even doesn't even exist anymore. So you know whatever. Um, I see somebody here has thrown in a. Um, Richard Cuss, NSR Tactical, you'll never have a broken holster. Honestly, horse crap. Bullshit. Plastic holsters are plastic holsters. They're breakable. It's, it's horse shit. Um, it just is. You know, I don't know. 
I don't know NSR. I don't know anything about them, but, you know, come on, dude. Um, uh, John Lilly takes a guess at that holster. No, that is a uh, – it is not for a CZ. Um, it's not a bad guess, though. Yeah, a European country that does not exist anymore. So there you go. Um, these holsters, what are these? These are – these are a little bit better option. Uh, this is uh, an example of, uh, these are uh, Raven concealment holsters. And I actually, I generally, for, for uh, nope, Chad, Chad asked, Tokarev, nope, good, uh, good, uh, good, good guess. Um, uh, Joseph Allen has just rolled in, guessing on the holster. Looks like a European holster for an HK, I think he said PM7, or, you know, um, it, it's a, I can't remember, what's the, I used to call it the SIG P225, is that the P7? That's not, this is not a holster for that, this is, guess, I'm going to give it to you, this is for one of those uh, staple guns, the squeeze cockers, I don't think this was for a, uh, a 225, I don't remember, what's the, what was the 220, what did the West Germans call the 225, was that a, P5 or a P7, but what we call the H and K P7 in the U.S. I think I could be wrong on that. The, the staple guns, the squeeze cockers. That's what this is for. This was a police, a border police type holster. I think it was a kind of a drop leg holster, which was kind of weird because they didn't really wear heavy body armor. Um, anyway, so yeah, good guess. Um, so you know, Raven. I've had a lot of lot of good luck in general with Raven. Um, the, the, I mean, the basic, I call them clamshell holsters. You know, I've run these for years because the thing is, once guys like me, we find a holster, we don't switch these. These guys on the internet, they're switching holder, holsters every goddamn freaking month. And no, nobody does that in a real life. So, I mean, I ran Raven holsters for, I don't know, maybe eight years. Until um, we had two or three incidents in a row. We've had a couple incidents with Raven. A um, couple couple things I've dis disclosed publicly. We've had we've had some some goofy stuff come out of that shop, and a, one or two things that, um, that we haven't talked about. That again, I, I like their products, but you know they become so big, and you know they're not quite big enough that they can crank out holsters. You know in five minutes, which would be ideal. So you still have to wait for stuff, but you know there's not a lot of hand holding, or sometimes you can lose some, lose some some stuff in translation. You know that we we've had we've had some issues with with them. So any like Raven Raven holsters. Um, uh, oh, there's a there's an old there's an there's an old Raven holster. Um, so yeah, I mean we've got all kinds of all kinds of. Uh, you know, all kinds of, uh, you know, holsters. I mean, we've got, well, hell, here's a, uh, what's this one? This, this is a Raven product. And this is, um, I can't, this was actually, um, there's a guy, he was, a, I think he was a contractor. And uh, he uh, came up with a, um, uh, it was a holster, but you know, you, this thing's like a Lego set or a Rector set. They basically bolt it together, and um, um, it um, uh, it holds uh, two, you know, Stenag magazines, and it has uh, a Glock mag. So that was kind of a neat holster. And actually, I am able to get VP9 magazines into Glock mag mag holsters, mag carriers. So that's always kind of a kind of a good thing so but you know basically do I have a solution for the HK VP9 holster general holster issue no I, you know I've got a outside the waistband we're using we're using Raven uh, for daily carry we're using um, we're using um, right now the keepers concealment holsters which you know I mean we've had you know what actually I need I need to uh, I need to mention this. The other change, because we've had it, we've had keeper, we've had these keepers concealment holsters for Glocks, and besides them claiming that this holster, that the new holster is a little bit thicker, which again I take their word on it, it, it seems like it is. One thing it looks like they have done. Let me see if I can do this here. 
the early keepers concealment holsters, and we've had problems with this, is the uh, the uh, sight trench was so, so shallow that if you bought aftermarket sights for say, we the issue we had was with Glock. If you bought aftermarket sights, and um, you know Glock 17, Glock was it 34, Glock 19. Uh, if you bought the aftermarket sights, um, they wouldn't they would rub and they wouldn't clear. Uh, this one looks like this is definitely different than my original V. This is a VP9 holster, and you can definitely tell he's put a uh, he's put a higher little sight trench up here, um, like he's relieved it more. And um, so I would imagine that's been an issue that they've been addressing because when we initially had the problem, um, it came out of the armory. Uh, we had some people with uh, with these aftermarket sights for the Glocks, and they weren't. Uh, they, you know, they were, they were colliding on those, on those, on those holsters. And he's like, what the hell kind of sight are, you know, are you guys using? It must be a pretty big sight. And we're like, uh, it's the Wilson Victor Vickers tactical aftermarket sights. I mean, it's a pretty well-known sight. We're not talking, it wasn't a suppressor sight and it wasn't like some crazy one-off weird thing. I mean, you know, and it was, so I'm glad to see that. So, um, if I wanted to get aftermarket sights for the VP9, I like the sights on the VP9. The, the front sight could be a little bit taller because um, I'm just used to a bigger front sight, so I paint it. But it looks like the new Keeper's concealment holsters are they are uh, they're relieved for aftermarket taller sights. So that that's a good that's a good point. I forgot to mention that. So all right. So what else is there here in the um, in the oh somebody had mentioned. One of my app, well, because I, I travel worldwide, um, I travel a lot. I've carried guns at a lot of different places. And um, Chad Santillo, Novak, I guess you mean sights? Well, yeah, Novak sights. I'll tell you what, the one thing that we don't, uh, I, we, I like ledge sights um, for one hand malfunction clearance drills. You know, a lot of the circles that we move in or that we train in, you have to be able to do. Uh, one-handed malfunction clearance drills to either you know get certifications or to pass the you know pass the courses because you know whatever and so the Novak style sites I mean back in the day um, the Novak ledge we would actually take a Dremel and we would shave it we would literally we'd shave that thing and put a ledge in it for that very purpose so yeah I mean I don't I don't run Novak sites um, anymore. I don't if I if I can avoid it, I don't do it. One of my all-time favorite, um, one of my all-time favorite um, uh, favorite uh, holsters is made by Raven Concealment, but they don't make it for the uh, HK. Uh, it's these. Uh, what the hell are these called? Vanguard twos, I think. Or did I say Vanguard for something else? Anyway, these, let me see if I can find a, uh, uh, let's, that, you know what, there isn't a, there's a Glock I can see, but I'm not going to get up. I'd probably have to bump the camera. Um, these, we really enjoy these for, because if we're packing firearms and normally we, we, you know, we gun up pretty quick once we hit the ground, what we've done with these is we will, you know, you, uh, you uh, unload your gun, store your ammo however you want to store it. We have a way that we store it. We run a cord through the gun so TSA or security can tell that the gun doesn't have ammo in it. And then we have this over the trigger. It fits in the same clamshell or containers that we lock that we lock the um, that we lock the gun in, and then. Um, you know, we can just, we can load up whatever and, and drop these in and it's not a big hoo-ha mess, even like unbuckling your pants. These, if anybody could ever make, come up with a, a honest good to goodness solution for one of these, I would, I'd be totally down for it. Scott Wexler or just use big dots. Yeah, I'm, I have no problem with big dots. I've never had to use them. Uh, my vision's not fantastic, but it's, it's pretty good. Um, all I do is I paint the front sight post and then I can still I can still have a 
a pretty standard, accurate front sight picture so I can take shots at extended ranges. I'm able to get fine accuracy with my sights. I can see my front sight. Um, even at my age, so I don't I don't have to use big dots. I just paint my I just paint my front sights and it all uh, that all works. Uh, Aaron Wilkinson looks like a reholstering nightmare. This, uh, yeah, oh yeah. Well, I mean, I'm not running a training program here, but if you uh, if you're wearing one of these, you draw your weapon, you you press it out, you're doing what you need to do to reholster with this. You have to unclip it out of your pants, put your gun in it, and then reholster. Yeah, you don't reholster. These are not you know, these are not good for, say, fast reholstering or if you need to, you know, reholster quickly so you could put hands on somebody and break out handcuffs or whatever you know. No, no, no. This, this, is, uh, this is a low-profile concealed carry civilian whatever, whatever, whatever kind of, kind of thing. So I love these. Um, these are actually by Raven. These are, um, these are actually um, molded. They're not... These are not Kydex. These are these are like pressed um, pressed plastic. I mean, these are actually metal and or plastic injected. This some dude with an iron isn't in a hair dryer isn't making these. Um, Ravens made enough of these that they uh, they press these out like a high end. They may even have some third party actually press these out. But these these are not. These are like a rubberized. These are very durable. These are the badass um, badass thing. Um, you know, so, um, so that's really pretty much it. So I'm just sitting here getting my pre-workout, getting ready to work at the, you know, the gym here at the armory on a Sunday. It's quiet. The armory gym. And, um, wanted to do follow up on, uh, on the holster story. So if you're going to get a custom holster, especially one of these plastic ones, you know, and there's some pretty nice ones out there, pay real special attention to how long it takes to get a replacement. Because if you break that son bitch, excuse my French, um, you may be, you know, you may be paying for it. And, um, you know, I just think that's something a lot of people don't think about. I think, you know, truth, be, most people, especially, you know, probably a lot of my viewers they're not breaking gear they're not breaking holsters they're not doing whatever but if you live in a world where you have to do um you know have to do you know have to worry about living a little rough and tumble life it you i think maybe you should consider buying two of them or you know factor that into your calculus just in case you ever have to uh have to um you know replace it so all right well this wraps up episode what is it episode 18 of the armory chat uh, i'm gonna go get changed and uh put on some workout clothes and hit the weight room so everybody thank you for your time remember it's all about shooting guns and having fun everybody have a good day